Hello, this is Mrs. Butcher, and this video is over defining and using probability. The probability of an event is going to be given as a number from 0 to 1, and that indicates the likelihood that an event will occur. As shown on the number line below, we have this number line, and if the probability is 0, then the event's not going to occur. And if the probability is 1 half, the event is equal, equally likely to occur or not occur like a 50% chance of rain or whatever. And if your probability is 1, then the event is certain to occur. Probabilities can be written as fractions, decimals, or percents. So like this could be given to you as 1 half, or you could say a 0.5, or a 50% chance. All of those are the same thing, and you can write it in any of the three ways that you prefer. All right, so... Whenever you hear about probability, what, you're, you, what people are usually talking about is the theoretical probability. And the theater, theoretical probability of an event is when all the outcomes are equally likely. We have um, the number of outcomes in event A out of the total number of outcomes. So I gave you a little Venn diagram here. If all the possible outcomes are in this rectangle, and then event A is just this, uh, this oval or this ellipse here, um, then the probability of the outcomes in event A, you, you just take all these and then you divide it by all the total. It's always just part over whole. So, for example, you roll a standard six-sided die. Find the probability of rolling a five. Well, if you roll a die one time, you have six possible outcomes. There is only one five on that uh, dice, so there's one, uh, one five. That sounds weird. One five. So we have one out of six. That's our probability. One out of six. Find the probability of rolling an even number. Okay, so we still have six outcomes, but three of those are even, right? The two, the four, and the six. So we have three evens out of six total outcomes. Three out of six is one half, or 0.5 or 50%. Okay, and in this next example, now it gets tougher. All right, so America's Next Top Singer is a popular singing reality show on TV, similar to another one that I don't wanna get you know, sued for using their name in my video, so I'm not going to. The show has seven musicians scheduled to perform on a certain night. The order in which the musicians perform is randomly selected before the show. So they don't know what order they're going to go in. They just draw names out of a hat or whatever. What is the probability that the musicians perform in alphabetical order by their last name? So, you know, if, if they just randomly chose their names and it just happened to be alphabetically, you'd be like, what are the chances of that happening? Well, now we're going to calculate those chances. And so for this, we have to go back to um, one of the uh, previous lessons, and that is how many different orders of the musicians could there be? And remember, when order matters, that's permutation. So if there's seven musicians, then there are seven factorial permutations of the performers, right? Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And out of all those combinations, only one of them is um, in alphabetical order. So the chances that randomly choosing the order of musicians is in alphabetical order is 1 out of 7 factorial, which is 1 over 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 1 out of 50 40. And that's an acceptable answer, 1 out of 50 40. Or you could Calculate the decimal, it's 0 .000198. Or you could give that as a percent, and so you move the decimal over, and it's still 0 .0198 percent. 0 .0198 percent chance of that happening. Pretty slim. All right, now, next one. You really despise four of the musicians. You just can't stand them. What is the probability that you will hate the first two performers? So now order doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter if you hate, you know, Joe and then Susie or Susie and then Joe. You still hate them both, right? So we're just looking at combinations. And of two musicians, um, we have seven to pick from combinations of two at a time. So that's how many combinations we have of two performers. And then if you think about all the, the performers, there are four of them that you hate. And so all the combinations of those four people, two at a time, would be 4C2. So the probability um, that the first two performers are going to be two people that you don't like would be, um, so we'll put the probability is 4C2 out of 7C2. And I'll let you go ahead and use your calculator for that, and you get 6 out of 21, um, which reduces to 2 sevenths, 2 out of 7, or... I'm running out of room here, so I'll put 28.671% chance that you hate the per first two performers. So not high, but it could happen. All right, guys, now this is important. Probability is often wrongfully mixed up with odds, right? You say, what are the chances of that happening? What is the probability of that happening? What are the odds of that happening? But they don't mean the same thing. Probability is your part out of poll, but odds are your chances for to your chances against. So it's not out of the whole, it's to the um, opposite amount. All right, so odds measure the chances in favor of an event, or you can say the odds against an event occurring. When all outcomes are equally likely, the odds in favor of an event A and the odds of ag against an event A are defined as follows. The odds in favor of an event are going to be the number of outcomes in A over the number of outcomes in not in A. And the odds against would be just the opposite. So if I said the odds against you winning, then you would say like 250 to 1, where the odds for you winning would be 1 to 250. Um, so when it's against, it's the not A in to on top. And odds are written in the form A over B or A colon B. It's written, they're written as a fraction or a ratio, but you are not going to put them as a decimal or a percent. We don't give odds as a percentage because it's not part out of whole. So here's an example. A card is drawn from a standard deck of 52 cards. Find the odds in favor of drawing a 10. So we're not saying the probability of getting a 10. That would be, um, you know, four 10s out of 52 cards. Now we're saying the odds in favor. So we're going to say, how many, um, how many tens could we get? We could get um, ten, or four tens, right? Four tens. How many cards are not tens? There are 48 non-tens. See, it's not 52 anymore. It's 4 over 48. So the, um, the odds in favor of drawing a 10 would be 4 over 48 reduces to 1 to 12. You have a 1 to 12 chance of getting, or, or 1 to 12 odds of drawing a 10, or, um, or you could say 1 colon 12, 1 to 12, like that. But you cannot give it as a decimal or, or a percentage. So now find the odds against drawing a club. So we want to say how many cards are not clubs over cards that are clubs. And there are four suits in a deck of cards, so 52 divided by 4 is 13. There's 13 clubs. So if I subtracted 13 from 52, I'd get 39. 39 of the cards are not clubs. So 39 to 13, which reduces to 3 to 1. Or 3 colon 1. 3 to 1. 3 to 1 odds of draw against drawing a club means you're more likely to not draw a clip, right? Okay. Okay, so aside from theoretical probability, we also have experimental probability. And that's going to be where we've actually done, somebody's actually done an experiment, and that contained a certain number of trials. And so they've said, based on previous data, the experimental probability is the probability of A would be the number of trials where A occurred over the total number of trials. So it's very much just like regular probability, only when it's experimental, it's based on something that somebody's already um, experimented with, I suppose. 
So here's one. A bar graph shows how old adults would choose to be if they could choose any age. Find the experimental probability uh, that a randomly selected adult would prefer to be at least 40 years old. So at least is a key, key word, key phrase here. All right, so here's our, our chart. Um, it says that 463 adults wish they were under 20. The most, 1,085 adults wish they were in their 20s. That's where I would choose to be too, maybe. Um, 879 choose to be between 30 and 39. 551 want to be between 40 and 49. Uh, 300 between 50 and 59. And 238 between 60 and 69. So first we have to add up all these numbers to see how many people they actually, um, how many people they actually surveyed, and that would be uh, three thousand five hundred and sixteen total people. That's going to be your denominator. Now we want to look at the number of people who choose to be at least forty. So these people and these people and these people choose to be at least 40. So that adds up to 1,100. So the probability is 1,100 people want to be at least 40 out of 3,516 surveyed. And then you can reduce that fraction. Um, you could give it as 275 over 879. Or, so I'm going to write it over here, 0.313, which is about... 31 point, give me three decimal places, 286%. So about a, a little less than a third of the people would wish to be at least 40 years old. All right, and then the last type of probability is a geometric probability, and that's where we actually have physical areas or lengths or volumes. Um, so here's an example. You jump out of a plane aiming for your backyard. If there is an equal chance of you landing anywhere in the yard, what is the probability that you will land in the pool? So I'm going to give, draw your yard for you. It's a rectangular backyard, and it says it's 40 feet by 60 feet. And then you have a pool in the yard, circular, with a radius, remember radius is halfway, of 10 feet. So all we're doing is... Um, actually doing an area calculation here. Um, the probability of landing in the pool would be the area of the pool out of the area of the whole yard. And I know you guys are saying, but there's not the same chance. It depends on where the plane is. Well, let's just say we don't know where the plane is. So just, you know, go with it. It's equal chance of landing anywhere in the yard. So the area of the pool is going to be pi r squared, pi times 10 squared, the area of the yard will be 60 by 40. And when you reduce that, you get pi over 24. But nobody says, oh, the probability is pi over 24. At least I hope they don't. Um, so that's about 13.090%. Eh, not that great. You'd probably land in the yard and break your neck instead. So don't jump out of a plane aiming for a pool. Okay. And that's it for this video. You guys have a good night.